Now, joining me to discuss the latest from what happened today at Occupy, the one-year anniversary protest from the Blaze, Buck Sexton, and Michael Pelka. Um, was there as much passion this year as there was last year? Because, I mean, to quote the president, they were fired up and ready to go. Uh, I think they were fired down and ready to go back to bed. There were um, more officers of law enforcement on site than there were occupiers. Uh, Buck and I were on opposite ends of the protest, trying to work it from the ends to the middle. And uh, it was the most um, impassioned round of indifference I think I've seen in a long time. All the jokes about the aroma um, aside, were you fascinated by how illogical some of their demands were? and how if they really just sort of wrapped their heads around what it was they were asking for, they would find their biggest complaint should be with government, not private industry? It was a parade of, of nonsense and stupidity. W one of the signs that I saw today I'd never seen before was tax Wall Street and AIDS. I have no idea what that is even supposed to mean. If you were to ask me, I, have, I can't even see the you connection. You mean the AIDS is directly related to the tax I, rates paid? I, 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 I have photos of this, Andrew. I don't even know what to say. It was crazy. Um, but there were a whole bunch of those signs. It's a complete disconnection from reality. But they absolutely, at the, end, at the end of the day, when you look at what the sort of unifying fabric is, if there is one, the thing that does most unify them is the sense that government is actually the answer. That's the only thing that they really tend to have in common, which is fascinating, by the way, because there is, of course, this anarchist tinge, which you would think would be no government. Black block. But, but they, actually, they actually, for the most part, like government, too. They just want to wear black and destroy stuff. When I was down there, I asked them where this meadow was full of unicorns they thought they were going to pull this government from, that we saw the corruption almost instantaneously. They started raising all this money, and next thing you know, that the, the elites of the Occupy movement, well, they, the fact that they even created an elite was, was pretty amazing, began to act like people, given other people's resources, spend them the way socialist aristocrats in other countries spend them, and they didn't even feel a sense of guilt about it. One of them was quoted by the New York Post as saying, well, I needed to get sleep. Well, all the people down here needed to get sleep, too. You were the W. They were under a tarp. There were some interesting things that also happened down there. Remember the food deliveries they would get? There were a couple of restaurants that would bring really nice truckloads of food, filet mignon, there were shrimp and lobster. And when the homeless community in New York caught on to it and started showing up, and when some of the people just getting out of the tombs heard about it and started showing up, they said, wait a minute, this is our food. Oh, this is not the, This is not for everybody else. You just can't show up and get this. And so they started changing the meal times and hiding the meal times from the people who were there. But they didn't have anywhere to go, so they were just going to sit and wait. They got a little taste of reality on that. And the Working Families Party, I don't know if you remember them. No one has a job? Yeah, no one has a job, but they are the Working Families Party, a Soros-sponsored entity, would go down there and work on the site, and they were paid $10 an hour to be there and agitate at Occupy Wall Street in the early days. At 9 o'clock, they left. I followed them to the subway one day and asked them how I got a paying job and they didn't want to answer any questions. They ran to the other end of the platform. But those guys are all gone. They're all gone. All the organized money's gone. There are just a few crazies left right now. I remember watching uh, YouTube videos of people you know, trying to conduct interviews with some of these individuals with their iPads and their iPhones, which I thought is ironic. iPad, iPhone. Shouldn't it be the Wii phone or the U phone? <laughs> or the Asians didn't the, make those, yeah, Andrew. The, 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 the <laughs> hour pad. But whenever, whenever interviewers both official or just intrepid bloggers tried to get these people to give up their worldly possessions all of a sudden they found they found stuff was theirs and when they heard about theft they were trying to protect what was theirs all of a sudden it wasn't so communal after all it was actually a fascinating experiment it was sort of a sociological experiment with a whole bunch of sociology majors uh, if you recall when they had the encampment last fall it broke down along class lines. There were articles written about this. That the, like the I north believe and the was the, south. It, it was there. There was sort of the I believe it was the eastern side of the park, the upper end of Zuccotti Park. That was where you had more occupiers who were the movement's elite, if you will. The that was where the, the media thinkers, tent the was. The thinkers. The that was where they kept their books. When you went further down in Zuccotti, that's where you found people who, well, let's just say they were smoking things, and uh, it was a little messier. And there was this class divide amongst them. And there were there were discussions in some of the general assemblies about how do general assemblies, you know, finger twinkles. This is where we have our consensus-driven process about how we do everything. Uh, there were discussions about maybe we should kind of get rid of these guys because they're not really a part of our communal and open movement. It was kind of weird they had to have a rape-free zone. I thought 
all of the United States was a rape-free zone. If there was yeah. a rape, we would prosecute that, not say don't report that. It makes us look bad. And they were segregating by sex. They had that one giant Quonset tent, that hut they set up that was just for women because of the rape problem, that the rape-free zone wasn't working. The entire ownership and usage of Zuccotti is suspect as well because there were some strange ties back to Bloomberg and, and some folks with some curious financial connections to all this too that turned a blind eye in the early days until they got called out on it. So I, I think the movement started under dubious... Uh, notions that came from a, a bunch of different disparate causes and then never really gelled. They never had a single focus. And if you walked around today among the few that were there, they still don't. There's did, still did no central focus. Because I read that they were going to do something different than some of the clownish stuff with the, with the drum circles and the, and the hula hoops and the, they were going to dress up in suits and ties and carry briefcases and they were going to try to play pranks from within, not just occupy the property from the outside. Did any of that get off the ground? You know, Mike and I have been to a lot of these things. Uh, you know, we try to cover it together when we can. And I have to say, one thing I will give them credit for is an unbelievable endurance for boredom. I mean, they can stand around for hours and hours, <laughs> twinkle fingers, and try to say, you know, maybe we'll do something in a couple of hours. As to the specifics of your question, did they do any of this stuff? I think there were a few of these occupiers who dressed up in what they thought was business attire. By the way, the cops, they could pick out the <laughs> occupiers in business, in business attire a mile away. They weren't fooling anybody. Um, but they went into a few of these banks. There were you know, maybe 40, I think 40 or 50 arrests in total in the morning. They're still down there right now. I'm sure they're planning some other things. The big thing was the human chain, right? They're right. going to link arm and arm to prevent people from getting to the New York Stock Exchange this morning. That didn't happen. And uh, the black block uh, did not show up. I did not see, I, I didn't see any black block one. members. You got one, okay. One. There was one, one lone, guy, like one lone guy. black block member who's like, what happened to everybody else? That was it.